I know I've needed to get back to teaching you something many of you have asked. So I've got a tutorial coming up here when it comes to color grading and specifically your skin tones. This is gonna work on any skin tone and any camera. So let's get into it. What is up you beautiful humans? Welcome back to the channel. And yes, today I want to get into another tutorial when it comes to filmmaking, specifically your color grading. Now, whether you are sitting here doing talking head like me, you're filming out there, you're filming your podcast and you need to dial in your skin tones. Yes, we all need to dial in our skin tones. Now this will work with all skin tones, regardless of the color of your skin and pretty much regardless of the camera that you're using. Now I film on Sony and a lot of people are like, yeah, the color science in Sony, skin tones are always green. Well, we're going to correct that here today. I'm gonna to bring you into my workflow. This is something that I've been working on for quite a while now, trying to dial in my color correction, but specifically my skin tones. Now, a couple of things, I'm gonna bring you back to the workstation over here. And regardless of the monitor that you have, because you can't necessarily trust all of the monitors. Now, that's a great monitor that I have behind me, the ViewSonic, and I do use a MacBook Pro, and the displays there are fantastic. However, when I upload these YouTube videos, it doesn't matter, people are watching on their smartphones or a big screen TV or some other laptop, and those are all different. Those screens are calibrated differently. But in today's tutorial, what you're gonna be using is the vector scope and isolating those skin tones. And that is going to give you that true measure of what's happening with the skin. Now, before we pop over to the workstation here, I wanna talk about some quick pre-production things that you need to think about. First and foremost, I am sitting here in my studio and controlling the light. I have my shades pulled, they are closed, and I have a light here in front of me, the key light in front of me, and a fill light back here. And what I will say is that I know what the Kelvins are, so I know what the white balance needs to be set at. I know because I know what those lamps put out. But if you're filming outside or if you're filming in a situation where you don't exactly know what the white balance is, you can get yourself a gray card and be able to adjust your white balance. And you know what? I should probably put some steps in the description and maybe, you know what? We should do a video on that. Put that on the sketch. So we can talk about gray cards later but adjusting your white balance is, is key, it is paramount. Using auto white balance is gonna throw you off because your, your balance is gonna change as the light shifts, especially if you're not in a controlled environment. So focus on your white balance. Now, after you've got your lighting dialed in and your white balance, then you need to think about the picture profile that you're using on your camera. I film with Sony and so I use the HLG profile and I probably, I've talked about doing a video on my setup, so I should, you know what, let's, let's put that on the schedule too. So another video for the community here, we'll dial in my, my camera settings and I'll share that with you. But I'll at least list out what I do use so you can kind of take that and run with it a little bit and then we'll do another video later to kind of walk you through it. Now let's pop over to the editing workstation here and I'm gonna show you my workflow. All right, so I've decided to just work on what I just shot here rather than working on something that I've already worked on before. But what we need to do is this looks really blown out and not correct. That's because I shot an HLG. We need to come over to the color space override, click down Rec 709, and boom, that changes a lot. Now, when we come over here to the left, I use RGB Parade and the Vector Scope. We're gonna be focusing on the Vector Scope, so I will get rid of RGB Parade. But first and foremost, let me just correct the exposure a bit. And I need the... RGB parade for that. So I'm gonna bring that exposure up just a bit here. Bring a little bit of light in. Bring that down, crush that a little bit. And I think we're okay for now. So I'm gonna go ahead and go over to view, single, and then bring the vector scope. Now what you're looking at here is obviously we've got the colors. So we've got green and yellow. The green here, nope, that is not my skin. That is definitely the shirt. I put this together, I think, just to kind of challenge myself, and there's definitely green in the background. And over here, you'll see this line, the skin tone line. Doesn't matter your skin color, it works for all skin. And you'll see some of this hanging around the red, and of course, this is magenta, but this is hanging close to the, the skin tone line. What we wanna do is isolate that. So what I like to do is just kind of bring this up a bit, bring my face in and see, this is going to be a challenge because I do not have perfect skin uh, and I have never had perfect skin. 
freckles and pale and some red areas. So what we're gonna do here is we're gonna do a draw mask. Now what this is gonna do is we're gonna come over here and we have the draw mask here and we're gonna isolate this skin. I had used the draw mask tool to isolate certain colors when I was color correcting things and then realizing that I was trying to change my skin tones without the draw mask tool and I just I love this idea of isolating this just getting right into the skin isolating that there we'll blow that up just a little bit more you could also come down to your scale if you need to uh, to scale it up and down I just use the view tool now what we're going to do here is look over here at the vector scope the vector scope is showing us that we're not that far off of the skin tone line here which is great but definitely some red blemishes and there's some areas here uh, that we need to work on so we're going to come over here we are going to go to hue saturation curves all right and then we're going to toggle this on i'm going to run this across my forehead it's a good spot and what you'll see here is that red dot that just kind of popped up here. Now I'm noticing a little bit of green. Okay, so there's a little bit of yellow and green. I'm gonna hold shift, move that over just a little bit, shift, holding that shift key and moving that over. We're gonna get back to that in a second. Coming back over here, let's actually focus on that red. We're gonna bring that red down a little bit closer to see how I'm moving that. So we're going to bring that down. So I got a little bit of pink in my lips. All right. So getting rid of some of that red around here. Now, what I also want to try to do here is see if we can get that line a little bit cleaner. So I'm going to push this up just a little bit. See how we're cleaning that line up a bit? Starting to clean that line. Not too bad. Now, I have been known to straighten that line out a little bit more, but I'm kind of liking where the skin tone is, but you can certainly work with your particular situation but let's actually come over here for a second let me undo the mask make sure now here's one issue that i see with the lights see how there there's a little bit of that like red in there i may actually need to do Move that over just a little bit bring that down Pretty close to that skin tone line. Yep. And now we've brought out the, the color of those lights. So I actually had a video where these lights were a bit pinkish or something. So that was actually my mistake, something that I uh, didn't catch. So draw a mask. So this is kind of where we are. And we are pretty close to that skin tone line. And I'm kind of liking where we are because here's another thing. I'm going to come back here, undo the mask, bring this here, fit. And something that I also like to do is add a custom LUT. Now, maybe I should do a video on how to make your own LUTs, but something that if you're adding a LUT, so let's go ahead and toggle that LUT on. I have this look, and of course that changes, whoa, that changes a lot. Um, but let's bring this down A little bit to let's say around 40 all right i'm digging that i'm digging that now let's come back over here to the draw mask bring that back up and look at that we've gotten some of these blemishes out of the way uh, so let's look at the hue here and then also looking at that line that looks even cleaner with that lut so looking pretty good And so I still have the color here in the light and the color in the background. 
uh, how I like it. I kind of like this sort of vintage look. My shirt is still green, but a little bit different green. But you can see if we undo this, undo the LUT, undo the color, undo the hue, and then toggle that all back on again. And that's what we have. Not a bad little color grade, but as you'll see, you need to kind of play around with things and tweak things, but now you know how to isolate and look at your vector scope. So looking at your vector scope and isolating those skin tones. All right, so that is actually my workflow. I would love to know about what's going on with your workflow. Love to exchange some, some thoughts and some ideas. Let me know how it's actually going. And again, this is definitely a work in progress. Keep practicing and let Jimmy, the third cup of coffee, you might want to tone it down before you get into the color grading. Bring that, there we go. Stay tuned for more tips and tutorials on the channel. I really appreciate your time and attention. Hopefully this brought you some value. Thanks so much for tuning in. Go out there and do those things that matter. Keep rocking those faces. I'm gonna keep creating right here. You go do that out there and I'll catch you right back here on the next one.